Today we're going to learn how to edit your RAW and JPEG photos with Lightroom CC on an iPad. Let's go! What's up everybody? Phil with Photo Gear Fun here today with another tutorial. The first thing you see here is you can see that you have a way to select your photos. There's a cloud icon here and you can see that it's synchronized and backed up. You can also do searching here if you want to search for anything in particular inside of your catalog. But basically that will take you into all photos. So if we go back, I'm going to select all photos here and you can see all the photos that I have inside of my Creative Cloud. And we're going to go ahead and look at raw photos today. I'm going to select a raw photo of this Arctic Fox. I wanted to walk you through the basic interface of Lightroom CC. You can see there are areas where you can share and export here. There are undo and redo buttons, the cloud button, which I just showed you. And then there are some things that you can do like adding to, you can delete photos, you can show or hide info, you can show or hide the histogram, you can copy settings, paste settings, create a preset, also do a slideshow. So for show and hide info, you can see now that if you look at the top left corner here, there's information about that file being displayed. And you can see that it's an RW2, which is a Canon RAW file. And you can, again, show or hide that at any time. I'm normally going to show my histogram. So you can see in the top left here, you've got your histogram. And that gives you an idea of, of the overall basic exposure. Along the side here, there are a number, the far side, there are a number of different um, areas where you can go for filters. You can do cropping. There is a healing brush that you can use to try to remove objects. There is also selective edits, which we'll get into in a future episode. But basically, we're going to look at just our kind of our standard settings here today. So I've got a photo pulled up. It is a raw photo, so it's going to need some work. And we'll go through and look at all the different menus that we have here. But you can see the way this is organized is supposed to be kind of the way most people's workflow would work. So you can see that there's an auto button, which will automatically adjust your exposure for you, which is a good way to start if you choose to. There's also starting out with different profiles. So these are profiles from your camera. In this particular case with Canon, these are the standard profiles that it comes with, these Adobe profiles, and you can change those profiles to give your photo a different look kind of right out of the gate. So I'm going to go with Adobe Natural here, but you can see that there are a number of different Adobe profiles as well as some camera matching. So this is what Canon would have. These would be different for different cameras but you can choose those and kind of, it's almost like a preset. And then you can see there are some artistics where you can kind of change almost like a filter. There's some black and white. There's some modern, again, you can kind of see these presets and that's just a quick way to, to get the image to a starting point that you like. And there are some vintage. So I'm going to stick with the Adobe raw neutral here. And we're going to go back to our, our basic editing panel. And you can see that there are, are choices here for light, color, effects, detail, geometry, and optics. So we're going to jump right into the light. And you can see now that we have different settings that we can change. The exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And these are kind of all basic edits that you would make to a raw file. So if you're not going to hit auto or use auto, this is where you would adjust your settings. And then you'd look at the histogram in the top left to give you an idea on how those settings are changing your photo. And the histogram is really a true way for you to understand what's going on. Sometimes the iPads might not look exactly right. It might not be calibrated. The histogram gives, gives you a true idea on what's actually going on inside of your photo. So if you wanted to start out by just using auto, you can just go ahead and tap that auto button. And then Lightroom will make changes that it thinks are good for your photo. And this might be good for you, it might be something that you want, might not be. If you don't want it, you can just tap on undo and that will undo the settings. And then basically each of these sliders works where you can tap to go in increments of 10. You can see how the exposure is changing. You can also look at the histogram. You can see that histogram changes. So you can go up or down in increments of 10 and to reset a, a, a 
slider, just double tap on it, or you can slide it and just adjust it to what you think looks good. So I'm going to slide it over to the histogram on the right side. It starts to come up a little bit and that might be overexposed, but basically you just want to choose something that looks right to your eye and on the histogram. With exposure, I usually save that, to be honest, until later. And I'll go through and look at my blacks and whites first. So as we look at the white slider, if you notice the histogram on the right side, the line is moving. And that means that you're getting closer to clipping or losing information in the whites. So you want to try to bring that over until you get it just to the edge so that you know that your whites are, are there, all the information is there, it's not clipping. You do the same thing with blacks, only you'll see the left side now of the histogram is moving. You can get it just to the edge of that histogram. And that's good for whites and blacks. And you can also adjust your highlights and that will, as you can see here, it's subtle, but it will change the highlights. And for landscapes, you might notice this in the sky that some of the, the information might be blown out. In this particular case, I'm going to take the highlights down. And shadows is kind of the opposite. If you look at the rocks here, as I raise the shadows, you can see that they're becoming brighter. So you're kind of raising the exposure in the shadow areas. And then we can change the contrast if you'd like to increase or decrease the contrast. And again, this is all kind of personal preference. Now that I've made those settings changes, I go back with the exposure and just look and see. Probably want to brighten that up a little bit. And again, I'm watching the histogram. And then we can look at the blacks again, just to make sure that we have all the black points we want. And you can do the exposure first if you'd like, either way, but there's a little bit of back and forth just to get that histogram to look good. So this is what I would consider a good looking histogram. And you can see the changes that we've made here. You also have the ability to look at curves. So if you tap on the, the kind of the S looking thing, that will allow you to make changes to curves. So you can make changes to R, RGB or red, green, and blue all at the same. And you can see if I just drag a point here, I'm affecting the photo uh, with all the red, green, and blue channels. And again, to reset this, you can just double tap. But you can also just look at the red channel. So if I make changes here, you can see that there's more blue here, more red here. So you can affect each of the individual channels if that's what you'd like to do. Again, you can do that with green and you can do that with blue. I don't really use these tone curves a lot, but it is available, which is a nice feature that is available for CC. So moving on now, I've got this pretty much exposed the way that I'd like to. We can look at colors. So this is where you can adjust your, your white balance, also tint vibrates and saturation. So the white balance, we have a feature called auto. If you want to use auto white balance, if the camera might have gotten it wrong, you can just select auto here and that will adjust the white balance and that will change the temperature color. You can also manually adjust that slider. So 71 is probably not a, not right. This is a daylight shot. So I want to get it to you know, 6,500, somewhere around there. I think that probably looks a little better. There's also a white balance selector. So if you tap on that little eyedropper, you can move it over to an area that you know is white and click on that check mark. And that will sample that area and set it to the proper white balance. So you can see it did change it a little bit from 65 to 68. And you can work with the tint as well. And again, all these sliders work the same way. You just drag them and to reset, you just double tap. So the tint of minus one looks good. Vibrance is something like saturation. So it will increase colors in areas that aren't completely saturated. So you can change your vibrance based on, again, kind of personal preference. And same thing with saturation. You can see if I pull that over, it's way too much. If I pull it down, it's almost black and white kind of desaturating. So the way I like to do this is just look at something that I think looks good and then just move the slider a little bit back and forth to see. I think that's probably about good for this particular image. We can move on to the effects. And this is where you can add clarity, the dehaze, which is great. Um, you can add a vignette and grain. There are other things that you can do as well for. If you add a vignette, you can change settings for that vignette. If you drag it to the left, you'll get a dark vignette. Drag it to the right, you'll get a white vignette. And then you can change things like the midpoint, which will 
change the way the vignette looks. So you can see it's getting smaller or larger, basically. There's also a feather, which will make that a little smoother or a little harder edge. You can see that's a pretty hard edge there. If you increase the feather, you get that smooth edge. And then you can change the roundness, whether it's kind of round or square. So for vignette, I'm not going to do anything. So I double tap that. And you can see now that the midpoint settings and feather, they're all disabled because in effect, I don't have a vignette. I'm going to go back and probably just do a slight vignette here. You can add grain if you'd like. If you want to have it that kind of old timey look, you can add grain. Not a big fan of doing that necessarily, but you can add grain. You can also do split toning. I'm not going to get into split toning today. Uh, just know that it is available. Looking at the details tab, you can see we have sharpening. And these are very, very similar to what you would see in Lightroom on your desktop. So you can add or remove sharpening. You don't want to go too crazy with this because it kind of starts to look crunchy. I like to stay usually like right around 40 or so. And you can change the radius and the detail. So how much detail do you want to retain? And the higher you move this detail, the less sharpening really gets applied. So um, again, this is all just personal preference. Um, and, and, and the masking will actually change what's sharpened as well. And this is tough to see in this particular context. But if you had it, you could zoom in. And you can pinch and zoom, by the way. And you can just kind of look at your masking. So you want to see what's being sharpened. You can change that with masking. There's also noise reduction. And just double tapping will bring you back to the full picture. So you can add noise reduction if you think that you need it. In this particular case, I'm going to add that. I usually try to go like between 20 and 40 normally, depending on the ISO. I'm going to leave that at 40. And again, there's a detail slider where you can choose how much detail you want to retain. And there's contrast as well. And you can change the color noise. And there really isn't much color noise here, but you can certainly change the color noise settings there. So that's a information about the details panel. And I know I'm going fairly quickly. We're going to dig into each of these in other episodes. So we have this optics where you can remove chromatic aberrations, which is kind of the, that green or magenta coloring that some lenses might have at certain settings. And you can tap that to change it, and also lens correction. So if Premiere knows about, I'm sorry, if Lightroom knows about your lens that you used, it will enable correction. So if there's any sort of distortion, it will straighten that distortion out. So those are the basics of the editing. There, again, there are other things that we're going to go more detail into future lessons. But right now, that will get you to almost where you want to be probably for most of the stuff that you're looking at. So we have a, a fully edited image here now that I would want to probably export. And then you can share it. You can save it to your camera roll. You can save it to files. You can open it in other things. If you want to do some other uh, edits to it, you can edit in. You can export the original. If you tap on share, it basically gives you a couple of options small size, which is 2048, which is good for sharing on social media or maximum value available. And that will take the entire image size, whatever that image size was. I think this was shot on the Canon SL2. It's a 24 megapixel picture. And then you have your standard kind of share options based on what apps you have. And again, you can share it to social media, Facebook, Instagram. You can mail it. You can save it to files. You can copy all those different types of things that you would normally do. So that was an overview of Adobe Lightroom CC on the iPad. Again, in future episodes, we're going to dig more into the power of this. I just wanted to show you kind of the basic edit and what I would do when I had a raw file that I wanted to edit and share on social media. This is Phil with Photo Gear Fun. Go out there and have your Photo Gear Fun, and we'll see you again in the next episode.